भगवते वासुदेवाया मंगलाय चलोकानाथ सखा पुम मंगलाय चलोकानाय मंगलाय चलोकानाया आद्यो आंतो आद्यो नंथा सका पुमन आद्यो नंथा सका पुमन मंगलाया मंगलाया फॉर ऑल गुड फॉर ऑल गुड चा चा आल्सो आल्सो हम्म लोक नाम लोक नाम of all the planets of all the planets shemaya shemaya for protection for protection cha cha and bhavaya bhavaya for elevation for elevation cha cha gosto also aste aste is there is there yadukula ambo dwa yadukula ambo dwa in the ocean of the yadu dynasty in the ocean of the yadu dynasty adya Yeah. The original, original. Ananta Sakka. Ananta Sakka. In the company of Ananta. In the company of Ananta. Balaram. Balaram. Puman. Puman. The supreme enjoyer. The supreme enjoyer. Yak. Yak. Yeah. Whose? Whose? Bahu Danda Ku Guptayam. Bahu Danda Guptayam. Being protected by his arms. Being Swapuya Puryam. Swapuya. In his own city. In his own city. Yadava. Yadava. The members of the Yadu family. The members of the Yadu family. Architaha. Architaha. As they deserve. As they deserve. Kridanti. Kridanti. Are relishing. Are relishing. Parma Anandam. Parma Anandam. Transcendental pleasure. Transcendental pleasure. Mahapaurushikaha Mahapaurushika The residence of the spiritual sky The residence of the spiritual sky Eva Eva like like Translation purport by his divine grace A C Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Rupa The original personality of Godhead the enjoyer and Balaram the primeval lord Ananta are staying in the ocean of the Yadu dynasty for the welfare, protection and general progress of the entire universe. And the members of the Yadu dynasty being protected by the arms of the Lord are enjoying like the residents of the spiritual sky. Please repeat the original personality of Godhead. The original personality of Godhead. The enjoyer. The enjoyer. And Balaram. And Balaram. The primeval Lord Ananta. Are staying in the ocean of the Yadu dynasty. Are staying in the ocean of the Yadu dynasty for the welfare, for the welfare, protection, protection, and general progress of the entire universe. The general progress of the entire universe. And the members of the Yadu dynasty, the members of the Yadu dynasty, being protected by the arms of the Lord, protected by the arms of the Lord, are enjoying life just like the residents of the spiritual sky. Shila Prabhupada's purport. As we have discussed many times, the personality of God and Vishnu resides in each and every universe in two capacities, namely as Garbhodaksai Vishnu and Shirodaksai Vishnu. The Shirodaksai Vishnu has his own planet on the northern top of the universe, 
In the gray, and there is a great ocean of milk where the Lord resides on the bed of Ananta, the incarnation of Baladeva. Thus, Maharaj Yudhisthira has compared the Yadas dynasty to the ocean of milk and Sri Balaram to the Ananta where Lord, res Lord Krishna resides. He has compared the citizens of Dwarka to the liberated inhabitants of the Vaikuntha Lokas. Beyond the material sky, further than we can see with our eyes, beyond the seven cold coverings of the universe, there is a causal ocean in which all the universes are floating like footballs. And beyond the causal ocean, there is an unlimited span of spiritual sky generally known as the effulgence of Brahman. Within the effulgence, there are innumerable spiritual planets and they are known as Vaikuntha planets. Each and every Vaikuntha planet is many, many times bigger than the biggest universe within the material world. And in each of them, there are innumerable inhabitants who look exactly like Lord Vishnu. The inhabitants are known as the Maha Paurushikas, or persons directly engaged in the service of the Lord. They are happy in these planets and they are without any kind of misery and they live perpetually in full youthfulness, enjoying life in full bliss and knowledge without fear of birth, death, old age, or disease, and without the influence of Kala, eternal time. Maharaj Yudhisthira has compared the inhabitants of Dwarka to the Mahapaurushikas of Vaikuntha because they are so happy with the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, there are many references to the Vaikuntha Lokas, and they are mentioned there as Madharma. For the kingdom of the Lord. Om Agyan Timiranda Syagyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stavditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hmm. This is a, quite an amazing purport here. And it's based on this uh, vision of Maharaj Yudhis there, living in, you know, what is it? Hastinapur. And he's there with uh, all the inhabitants. And Lord Krishna's there. And Balaram's there. And he's comparing the good fortune and to the atmosphere of the spiritual world. Although it's manifested in this, on this planet, he doesn't see any difference between the benefits that the residents of Hastinapur are getting with the association of the Lord, and those who live eternally in the spiritual world with the Lord and the Vaikuntha planets. And his vision is actually a complete transcendental vision because the principle is that there is two aspects to this which makes it perfect. Is when, when the residents are fully engaged in loving service to the Lord, that is the spiritual world. Even if it's manifested in different places, still because it has all the elements of the spiritual world, it's non different. Hare Krishna. And so, and because of the presence of Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna, the, he sees that it's the spiritual world, there's no difference. And he sees not only that the residents, are enjoying just like the people enjoy on the spiritual world and within the Vaikuntha planet. But he sees that the Lord is protecting them, giving them everything they need, and progress towards the goal of life, which is Prema Pumartha Maha, love of God. So he compares, and this comparison sometimes may be seen as being what we say only of comparison, but actually it's actually non different because wherever the Lord is and wherever there is devotional service to the Lord, then it says that there is there's no difference. Because whether the Lord manifests himself 
in the spiritual world, which is the eternal manifested, or he manifests himself in this material world, he's still fully in his position as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so this is a very, what we say, what we say, uh, instructive verse. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada said all our temples are like Vaikuntha. <laughs> he compared the material world to like a place where people travel from area to area and when they get to a, a temple he called it, he used the word, an embassy a spiritual embassy and in the embassy there is no distinction everything goes under the rule of the embassy and what ha happens outside of the embassy has no jurisdiction over the embassy so in the same way the material world is. Although we are in, apparently, the material world and the material body, we are not in the material world. And our bodies are actually engaged in devotional service, so they're becoming spiritualized. Or in some cases, fully spiritualized, depending on how intense that devotional service is. So here we are in New Vrindavan. So Prabhupada said New Vrindavan is not different from Vrindavan. In the sense that devotional service is going on, and that is the main concern, and that is the main focus, and therefore it has the same elements or qualities of the, as Ovrindavan. And we know Ovrindavan is a manifestation of the spiritual world, as, as it's described in, in, in Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's non different. The only difference is one is manifested, and one is unmanifested, and sometimes manifested. So when Krishna comes, the spiritual world becomes fully manifested. When he disappears, it still remains the spiritual world, but it's in a more unmanifested form. So by devotional service, that manifesting, that unmanifested atmosphere becomes more and more manifest. So here we are, and we have Radha Chandra. What made New Vrindavan so wonderful in the old days was that and this is one of the elements, of course there were many elements that made it wonderful. And still is wonderful, is that everything centered around the pleasure of the Lord. And that's the spiritual world. When everything is motivated for the pleasure of the Lord, and everything is executed in that mood, then there's no difference. And then simply everything that is needed to live and to progress in spiritual life is provided by the Lord automatically, as is mentioned here in this verse. So, and the comparison is made here, that even in the material world we see, or it's mentioned that there are the Garbal Daksai Vishnu and Shiro Daksai Vishnu. <coughs> so, these planets, one manifests as the the planet and the other one actually is where the Lord actually appears through this form of Vishnu and actually comes in various incarnations. It's the aggregate of the super soul, Shirodaksai Vishnu. It's also the gateway for the incarnations of the Lord. And Prabhupada compares this. He says in the northern part of the universe, these planets exist and there's a great ocean of milk. And on that planet, there are inhabitants, and so in one sense, not in one sense, in the absolute sense, it is the spiritual world. So, the spiritual world really depends on consciousness. The more the consciousness becomes Krishna conscious, the more the, the, more the spiritual world manifests according to that level of consciousness. And when the collective consciousness is, is there, then one can actually experience the, the same mood as the residents of the spiritual world. So this is, the, this is the goal, actually. We have everything, all the ingredients, it's just a matter of consciousness. And, so. and what, it, what is the foundation for that consciousness? Again, the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So all differences all contentions and whatever problems may have simply dissolve when all the residents within that atmosphere focus on the pleasure of the Supreme Personality. 
how to please the Lord. And of course, the Lord is pleased in different ways, but the essence, the essential principle that makes the Lord pleased is love or bhakti. Patram pushram phalam tayam yomi bhakti panashati taraham bhakti uparitam asnami payatatmanaha. Prabhupada quotes as this verse as a, as a foundation for understanding the mood of the Lord. It's that not so much what you offer, but it's, the, it's what is the mood of the offering. So when that mood of offering is to please the Lord, and Rupa Goswami gives that principle in, in Nectar of Devotion, he says, one should serve the Lord with a desire to please the Lord. But two principles are there, because even though there are people who please the Lord, but still are not on the highest platform of devotional service. And they get some benefit, but they don't get devotional service in the sense that, well, they get some aspect of devotional service. In other words, they could be free from material suffering and they purify their heart to some degree. But it's not complete unless one intends to please the Lord and at the same time please the Lord. So the intention to please the Lord has to be there in order for pure devotional service to manifest, or the devotional service to actually be complete. Because we have the examples that Krishna likes to fight, and he fights with demons, and the demons please the Lord because of the fighting spirit, because Krishna likes to fight. Prabhupada says, where do you get that spirit from to fight? From Krishna. <laughs> Sometimes we use it in the wrong way. <laughs> but that same principle is there within the heart of all living entities because it is actually the nature of the Lord is that he has this fighting propensity. And so when demons fight with him, they get some benefit because he, they give him pleasure in, in, to fulfill his desire for fighting. Can't fight in the spiritual world, there's no demons there. But sometimes it says that and Purnamasi manifests as different forms of the demons in order to bring about this mood of fighting in the spiritual world, but they're not real demons. They're just, they're just caricatures of the original demons in order for Krishna to act in these particular pastimes. But generally, as we understand from the pastime of Jaya and Vita, when Krishna wants to fight, it's the material world. So because the material world is the place where everybody fights, that's all we do here. <laughs> when you come right down to it, nobody agrees with anybody. <laughs> Prabhupada said, wherever there's two opinions, two people, there's two opinions, usually. And sometimes when that becomes a little bit exasperated, there becomes some tension and then there's some argument. When I say fight, I don't mean necessarily something violent. I mean that people disagree for the sake of disagreeing. If you, find, if you find something that is harmonious and getting along in the material world, you have to think it's quite miraculous. <laughs> but that doesn't negate the principle of intelligence because intelligence sometimes sees things in a different way. But therefore, in order for that intelligence to be directed in the right way, where it benefits Krishna and those who are involved in the activities of devotional service, it has to be guided by you know, religious principles and by those who can enact religious principles to inspire people to act in that way. In other words, there has to be leadership. <laughs> Sometimes we wonder why things don't go on. It's all about leadership. Wherever there is visionary leadership and there is leadership that has the quality of service to the Vaishnavas, then you have what we say a what we say a atmosphere where things can move in pure devotional service. So it all depends on that. So when that is absent, then we all struggle to somehow or other find harmony in whatever activities we do. And so we do we create it on a smaller level with individual devotees. Hmm. That was, that was just a text message. And it doesn't really work because unless there is this broader sense of community, we break up into little, little places within the larger community and we go on with our little activities. And 
It's nothing completely wrong, but it's still, it has a sen tens tendency to create tension when there is not harmony in how everything is moving in, their, in the same direction. So what to do? What to do is actually come back to the, the understanding that keep Radha and Daven Chandra in the center. <laughs> if we keep Radha and Daven Chandra in the center of all activities, and that means the pleasure of Radha and Daven Chandra means how would they want everything to go on? Of course, that has to be understood by practical teachings coming from the pure devotee spiritual master. So, Srila Prabhupada has given us the vision. So if we, enact, if we enact the vision of Srila Prabhupada, then we're pleasing Radha Vrindavan Chandra, that's so, all. As Prabhupada said, if you want to know Krishna, you just you have to hear from the Krishna's pure devotee. Otherwise, how can we do it directly? <clears throat> Krishna says, those who say he's there, my devotee, are not my devotee. The one who says his devotee of my devotee is actually my devotee. To become a devotee of the Lord means to become a devotee of Krishna's devotee. And of course, in the spiritual sense, that means follow carefully the instructions of the spiritual master, making that the life and soul. Yasya Devi Para Bhaktir, Tata Devi Tata Guru, Tatsyaifa Kartita Dhyata Prakasanatna Mahatmanaha. Prabhupada quotes this quite often just to give the illustration of where the success in devotional service is, is to make the spiritual master's instructions one's life and soul and meditate on that as one's meditation in devotional service. And then again, we always sometimes we say, well, how to understand the instructions of the spiritual master because you find sometimes it apparently is there is some what we say, different ways to interpret those instructions according to time, place, and candidate, you know, circumstance. So that requires intelligence, but what is, what is the, where is the expression of that intelligence? Again, that this becomes the only focus. How to find ways to cooperate around the instructions of the spiritual master. <coughs> Even if there is a divergent in what is the best way to do it, still cooperation remains supreme in executing that move because then that empowers, that, that allows Krishna to manifest his mercy whenever there is cooperation. <clears throat> so how to cooperate in the best possible way and still <coughs> express one's individual abilities, intelligence and creativity and that is called unity and diversity. To keep the unity focused on how to please Radha Vandava and Chandra and the different expressions on how that is done by the individuals in a, in a unified way. These are some principles of just how things could possibly go on in a better way. But again, coming back to the same point. It's not about me, it's not about you, it's not about anything, but it's about the Lord. But the thing is, it is about me, it's about you, it's also because it's, as soon as we make Krishna, put Krishna first, because we are part and parcel of Krishna, when Krishna is pleased, we all, we all, we all benefit, everyone benefits by that. Sometimes we don't see that, or we think that, you know, what's in it for me? <laughs> It's like, you know, Prabhupada said, when the hand is cut off, then the hand has no connection with the body anymore. And so, whatever you do for the hand has nothing, can never do anything for the body. And the hand can't benefit either. Neither benefit. So, but when the hand is connected, then all of us, then, whatever activity is performed by the hand, the whole body benefits also. So, we're all connected. We're all, it's amazing how each living entity is connected with each other, each, each, each living entity. Not only in the immediate sense, but in a broader sense too. Any, anything anyone does anywhere in the world has an effect in a, in a greater sense on others. Because we can, when you're in devotional service, nothing material can affect you. But 
in the material sense. Everything is so connected with everything else and one thing moves one way, it affects everything everywhere, everywhere else. And the material energy works that way. But in a spiritual sense, it also has some value too, but, but it's enclosed within the spiritual element. And that is that as we perform devotional service, we benefit others. Our, our own advancement and our pleasure in pleasing Krishna benefits the whole community. Each and every person can make a contribution to the benefit of others by becoming Krishna conscious. That's how, inter that's how much we are all connected with each other. Because we're all connected to Krishna and Krishna is all connected with everything. Okay, so I didn't have a lot to say today. But, any questions, comments? Yes, Soma. You're talking about how you have to take the you were speaking about how you have to take the order of the spiritual master as your life and soul. And that's how you make advancement in devotional service. It's a meditation, yeah. Yeah. I you know, had some association with Trivial Prabhupada and the only uh, instruction that I, I got, and it wasn't just personally to me, it was to a group. Hmm. I just maybe you could comment on this, but there was a group of us, and this was 1974. Hmm. And Srila Prabhupada said, "I want you all to assist Kirtan Ananda in developing new Vrindavan." And you did that. Huh? You did that. Yeah. So that was that was an individual instruction to all the individuals that were there. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then again, Prabhupada wanted New Vrindavan to be something that everyone could come to and experience the mood of Vrindavan. And then he gave specifics on how that should be, how that should be played out and manifested. So, not everyone gets a personal instruction. In fact, that was very rare. Even now, with those who are in a spiritual position of you know, mentorship. Not every disciple gets personal instructions. And those who do, consider it maybe fortunate in the sense that they can focus exactly on that. But the general instructions are not minimized or undermined. Chant 16 rounds, follow the four regulative principles, read Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, eat only Krishna Prashadam, Attend the functions in the temple if you're living in that atmosphere. If you're not, then make your temple, a, make a home your temple and perform the activities there. So the general instructions are for everyone. Specific instructions are for those who just had the good fortune to get those. It becomes a little easier when you get specific instructions in one sense. As you know exactly what to do. In the other sense, it's another thing is that if you don't do it, <laughs> then it's, you might say, the reaction is even more. I could tell a story about that. Please. Mm -hmm. Not about me. Are you? Well, Karanda told me a series of. Turn it on, yeah. Not on? No, not exactly. Sometimes the battery is shot. Okay, try again. Hare Krishna. We can hear you. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. Huh? There it is. There it is. Huh? There it is. Oh. You have gravity in there. Not the sound, but... Okay, so there was this devotee Krishna Das, and he was early sent to Germany. Saradia's brother, mm -hmm. Morris. She was very young when she joined him as a boy. Anyway, he was into jewelry, but anyway, he got sent to Germany. <clears throat> so Karanda told me this. He was there, and he was like the GBC, and a very important leader. So he witnessed this whole series of things. So he came, he left Germany, and uh, he was sitting in the garden. First of all, he was talking a lot about Christianity and the temple. 